Greetings brothers and sisters, Bartek here, welcome to Gamesquisition, where anything gaming goes. Today I want to share with you my impressions of the early access beta for Diablo 4 that took place over the last weekend. I was fortunate enough to receive a key allowing me to participate in this event, thanks to a dear friend of mine, you know who you are, my anonymous benefactor, thank you so much. In short, I had a lot of fun. Now we'll delve into the details a bit more in just a minute, but before we do that, I want to mention my history with the Diablo franchise. Now I played Diablo 1 on launch, never finished it because got bored. Diablo 2 then came and I also played it on launch, never finished, got bored, played up to the beginning of Act 3 as far as I can remember, then came Diablo 4. Yeah, you guessed it, there's a common theme here, never finished it, got bored after Act 2, then Diablo Immortal came, which I skipped completely. Now, jumping into Diablo 4, I had absolutely no expectations. I, I approached it with an open mind and just wanted to see what and if anything has improved from the previous iterations. Mind you, again, not played Diablo Immortal, so there's a gap in this timeline. When the servers opened on March 17th at 5 p.m. here in Poland, I jumped straight for the launch button because I had previously pre-installed the game, which was a good move on Blizzard's behalf, but still, you know, I was pretty lucky enough because in comparison to other people I've seen on the internet, my waiting queue initially was maybe three minutes, which, you know, you may complain, you might say, oh, th this shouldn't have happened at all because it was a closed beta, but to be honest, we, we well know Blizzard and their history with launch issues and stuff like that, so yeah, three minutes in line wasn't bad. After that, before I jumped into the game, after creating my character, I had maybe two or three uh, server error messages, but after clicking start game for the fourth time, I, I was able to jump straight in. Now, the game begins with an uh, opening cinematic that you've seen a million times because it was in the marketing materials for Diablo 4, available, I don't know, for how many months. It's awesome. It's Blizzard level cinematics. So if you've ever seen, and I believe you have, previous Blizzard cinematics, you know what to expect. It's top notch. Now, after the opening cinematic ended, you could choose your character. The uh, early access beta allowed you to play three classes. That was the Barbarian, the Sorcerer, and the Rogue. The next weekend open beta is going to include two more classes. That is the Necromancer and the Druid. When it comes to character creation, there's not really much to do. It's more of a tweak of the appearance than the actual creation of a character from scratch. And I've heard opinions that this was much better implemented actually in Diablo Immortal. But then again, you know, on the flip side, this is an ARPG where you look at your character from the top and you don't really see much of him or her because you're clad in ever-changing gear. However, in Diablo 4, there are actually numerous cutscenes that focus on your character. It's th These are not as high quality as the cinematics. These are done in game engine and um, they do serve the purpose of immersing you into the story and this works and give you a feeling that you are more center to the story. You are more invested in the story and the story is more about you up to a point but we're gonna get back to that further down the video after you customize the appearance of your character you then choose a name for him or her and then before you start you choose one of the two world tiers which essentially mean the difficulties and this is actually a huge gripe i have with the game we'll get back to that down the line after you're finished creating your character and choosing the difficulty level the game plays a kind of a trick on you it starts with a bitchin open and scene guys it's incredibly atmospheric it's very drab it's very gloomy and somber and you would be forgiven to think that this is actually setting the entire tone of the game however sadly it doesn't really and i think that the reason they did this was blizzard actually listened to player feedback and most of that feedback was that players wanted more Diablo 2 and not Diablo 3 when it comes to the stylistic choice and the feeling of the world, whereas Diablo 2 was much more down to earth, was much more visceral and grimy. And Diablo 3 has been critiqued for being overly bright, overly colorful, overly cartoonish in style. And I think that Blizzard actually went for that nostalgia that so many players have been expressing towards the feel of Diablo 2. And you get tricked because that changes pretty quickly, unfortunately. Now, before we go further, I just want to say a few things about the graphics. In short, they're fantastic. There's really nothing to complain about. The settings are very detailed. The insides of the dungeons and uh, especially the dungeons and the city and the villages and the outposts that you visit later on are 
fantastically designed. They are very believable. They are very immersive. There's just a ton of details that you can just stand and look at. And this is amazing because it builds the atmosphere of the game. Now, the thing that compounds this atmosphere, whereas the graphics are, well, very good, but they're not spectacular. The thing that really compounds the game's atmosphere is the immaculate audio. Now, even though Blizzard has kind of gotten us used to having really high quality music, this time I think they've honestly outdone themselves. Now, the way these instrumental tracks are performed and actually composed is nothing short of genius because they don't dominate the reception of the game. They actually supplement it so subtly but so perfectly at the same time that if you were to turn the audio off, you would definitely feel like there's a huge chunk of the experience missing. Now, on the other hand, if you do actually set your reception to listen and you focus on the music, you can hear the full mastery of the sound department that Blizzard hired or whatever outsourced this music to, because you can actually sit there for dozens of minutes and just listen to the tracks as if you were at a really hardcore classical music concert, if that makes any sense to you guys. Simply put, they're, they're just amazing. If you decide to play this game, you'll see what I mean. Earlier, I mentioned that the tone of the game changes, and that you can start to see as soon as you reach the first hub area of the game. For many of the Diablo fans out there, the series has always been more of a solitary experience, something that you were dealing with on your own at your leisure and focusing on what was going around you, sucking up the atmosphere and just slaying away. Diablo 4 makes a big visible step towards being something more of an MMO. I'm not going to deliberate and judge whether it's a good or a bad thing in this video. However, you must be aware that there are many multiple aspects of MMO in Diablo 4. And this isn't only limited to hub areas where you can meet other players that is very reminiscent of any kind of MMO that I've ever and you've ever played. You can also find these guys in the wild when you're adventuring. So even if you are opting for a more solitary experience, you are definitely going to run into other players. You can talk to them, you can invite them to parties, you can trade with them, you can even emote with them. But everything pretty much that we've seen in the likes of World of Warcraft. Now, in between these hubs and these villages that I talked about, there are sprawling areas that you have to run through in order to get from one point to the other. Kind of like Diablos that we've been playing before. While there are a lot of mobs in the opening area of the beta that I played, to be honest, there isn't a huge variety of them. There are some making a comeback from previous titles, the ones that you, well, kind of would expect because they're part of the lore and part of the sanctuary setting. But um, yeah, I was expecting a bit more of a mishmash and more of a variety of the enemy types and the mobs. On the plus side, they are incredibly well animated. The devs have even managed to employ different animations for their deaths depending on how you kill them. They will fall differently if they are bashed with a melee weapon and they will die differently once you've finished them with a spell and so on and so forth. So yeah, hat tip to Blizzard for doing that. Definitely makes a good impression and it's definitely much more immersive. Running around in the open world, you will find a lot of collectibles that you can use for crafting and upgrading your weapons. You can do these things in the hub areas of the game. You can also find altars of Lilith that upon visiting will grant you some stat bonuses. There are also cellars that you can find in the world, but um, yeah, we're, we're moving into not so good territory right now. I mean, these are incredibly copy paste. They actually, from what I've seen, have the exact same layout, guys. 
it's just two rooms, one that you enter the cellar in and there's like one more room attached to it and that's pretty much it. There are easy enemies in there and the things that I found in there are pretty much not worth my time even though clearing out a cellar takes like 30 seconds up to a minute so yeah. Running around the world map you also find dungeons of which there are a total of 23 in the closed beta. Now while undoubtedly fun to clear out, there seems to be a wide consensus in the online community that these dungeons are uninspired to say the least. The biggest criticism that seems to be going around is the fact that despite being procedurally generated, these dungeons are simply cookie cutter. They are incredibly similar to one another and they lack the depth and the immersion of dungeons that you could encounter in for example Diablo 2 where oftentimes you would just simply get lost in the dungeon. Here the path to the end of the dungeon is pretty straightforward. I mean you'd have to play with one eye closed and the other half shut to actually, you know, lose your way in this dungeon. They're, they are incredibly easy to navigate. Side note, as of the closed beta, there is no transparent map. There is no overlay map. When you tab, you open up a separate screen containing the dungeon map, but you can't actually have the map on a transparent overlay so that it's easier to navigate. But then again, like I said, I mean, there's nothing to navigate. It's, it's simple. I mean, you go in, you go straight, you turn left, you make another left, and then you turn right, and bam, you have a mini boss. Now, the mini boss is, again, pretty much uninspired. It's just a stronger mob that dealing with him or her is not an issue. And we'll come back to the difficulty in just a bit. Another criticism of the dungeons is the way they are organized. Mainly, there's always obviously an end boss waiting for you in the dungeon. Now, before you get to him, you usually have to, well, like, find a key. Or you have to find two keys. These are usually located in opposite parts of the dungeon. So you have to run to one part of the dungeon, clear out some mobs over there, grab a key, go to the other, literally, other side of the dungeon. It's nearly symmetrical at times where you find another group of mobs, you get a key, and only with those two keys you can go to the main room, which has been closed before, and you open it, and then you fight the boss. It's not horrible, but it gets really old really fast. Once you've run like 10 or 11 dungeons, you see the pattern and you can't unsee it which is a shame now i do do hope that they will change this in the full release but considering that there's less than three months unless the game gets delayed to launch i don't see blizzard like addressing this fact i also think that the chances of them altering the procedural generation of the dungeons in order to make them more challenging and more mm, well complex slim chances if you ask me unfortunately because apart from all this criticism like i said clearing out the dungeons is incredibly fun running in and that coupled with the music that coupled with the graphic style and with the mobs it, it's it's really really fun and that's what essentially games should be unless you're a seasoned diablo player and you're waiting to play those higher difficulties which brings us to another problem that i had with the game i am by no measure a pro Diablo player, I am in no measure an experienced Diablo player, but the game is incredibly easy. You can choose tier 1 world or tier 2 world. The tier 2 world is called veteran difficulty, which I believe is a prank. It's a joke basically by Blizzard because it's not. It's incredibly easy. When it comes to the mobs that you encounter, like regular mobs outside of dungeons, you can easily spam left and mouse, right button, and all the mobs will just fall in front of you there is no challenge there you go into autopilot and you just run through them it's honestly not challenging at all now when it comes to the bosses in the dungeons things ramp up a bit again on tier 2 world they didn't present an unsurmountable challenge however they do actually require you to focus and to use your skills in a more thoughtful and strategic way which brings us to the skills themselves. In the closed beta, I managed to play all three characters, the Barbarian, the Sorceress, and the Rogue. I did not max level any of them because of the limited time I had to devote to the game because, you know, life happens. But I did manage to level all of them to level 16 or 17. And one observation that I have is that the Diablo 4 gameplay mechanics, they seem to reward builds which focus not so much on dealing damage, not so much on soaking damage, but on mobility skills. Evades, dashes, teleports, they all seem to be indispensable in order to fight the bosses successfully. 
from the get-go you have an evade move that you access by pressing spacebar on the PC. By the way, you can also play with controller on PC, but it's time constrained. There's a cooldown. There's like a three second cooldown. So if you re want to rely only on the spacebar evade action, you are not going to get far, guys. You need to invest heavily in other skills that will increase your mobility. Now, a perfect example of this is I remember when I got a really nice slash nasty surprise at level nine with my rogue when in one of the dungeons after opening the door, mind you, this was not the final boss. This was like a randomly generated boss, which is a very welcome addition. But I ran into an old friend and a classic staple of the Diablo franchise, the Butcher. Now, because I didn't have enough points at that time put into skills which promoted and increased my mobility, I wasn't able to run away from him. And he made short work of my very squishy rogue, who, despite being able to dash out considerable amounts of damage, was unable to get far away to survive. So yeah, once you're doing your character progression and you're doing your ability trees, remember to invest heavily in movement skills. When it comes to respecking, the way they've done it in the closed beta is that up to level 15, you can respec for free. Above that, you do pay money, but that's not like huge money. The money is pretty well balanced with what you're making, selling items and finding loot and just, you know, picking up coins from fallen enemies. When it comes to the items themselves, they seem to be dropping pretty generously. Now, in my opinion, this loot drop rate is quite high, but I'm considering that it might have been done for the sake of the beta just to show off the various things that you can drop in the game. And I hope that this drop rate will be adjusted for launch because, well, there's loot showers, guys. I mean, there's no way of, of sugarcoating it. You, you get loot everywhere. Honestly, everywhere you look, there's loot. To finish off, I want to mention the elephant in the room, which is microtransactions. Blizzard has had a nasty history with implementing microtransactions. I mean, it, you might remember the entire immortal drama with the predatory monetization, which was never actually changed. So there is concern among the community that they might have this nasty trick up their sleeve post-launch because pre-launch Blizzard are actually saying that there will not be any microtransactions of the pay to win kind. There will, however, be a battle pass, which as Blizzard is saying, again, pre-launch will only contain cosmetic items and cosmetic upgrades. But, um, yeah, there is a healthy dose of skepticism towards actually introducing pay-to-win mechanics and pay-to-win items post-launch. So buyer beware. I mean, this is Blizzard, but on the other hand, this is becoming the industry standard because this is the world we live in today. So yeah. To shortly summarize my thoughts about the early access beta of Diablo 4, guys, in a nutshell, this is an incredibly fun game to play. It's really atmospheric. It's really pleasant on the eyes. It, the graphics are really nice. The gameplay is really smooth. The characters control incredibly well. They're incredibly responsive. Slaying mobs and bosses is pure fun. Question is whether even the most dedicated players will stick around for, you know, subsequent seasons of the game and continue unlocking further world tiers because I'm afraid that this formula might get really boring and tiresome really, really fast. That said, I'm really looking forward to next week's open beta where the Necromancer and the Druid class will be made available to us. And I'd love to hear from you guys whether you are actually planning to play in the open beta or have you already pre-ordered the game or are you planning to wait post-launch or are you gonna completely ignore Diablo 4? Let me know in the comments below. Like if you liked the video, sub if you liked it a lot, ring the notifications bell to get notified about further content here on Gamesquisition. Good luck, have fun, I'll see you in the beta. Bartek out.